Hey, good evening. Good, good evening. It is uh, Saturday, June the 13th, and I'm your pastor, Reverend uh, Gregory Hudson, and I am uh, preparing to share with you a few announcements, a few concerns, as well as give you a brief um, uh, understanding and commentary of our Sunday School lesson. The first thing I want to share with you all today is to share my appreciation for how well you all have uh, been helping us to maintain this congregation, its vibrancy, its uh, vitality, and its relevance. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, last week, I watched between both of the social media uh, platforms that we have been using, and I, I am extremely proud of how well we all were able to adapt and to adjust uh, to even some technical difficulties. And that shows me uh, something. And I want you to know that I'm very, very proud of that. So I'm going to ask you tomorrow, as we prepare to listen and prepare to worship again, I need you tonight or in the morning, go ahead and share uh, the link, share the the website on Facebook or on uh, YouTube Live and invite your friends. Tomorrow, I believe last week, we were up to about 43 viewers and I want us this time, let's go ahead and shoot for 50, which means that I need you. I'm counting on you to invite as many people as you can so that they will be able to participate with us and get the blessing uh, that you're getting. So start tonight, start tonight inviting your friends. Hopefully you've already started. I noticed that some of you already started to share uh, and uh, share your post and uh, watch parties. And I appreciate that because the message has to get out. And I wanna thank you so much uh, for helping us uh, to do that. Let me share my screen with you there uh, just for one minute as we continue to do uh, uh, each week. Again, I want to thank you so much as we continue in our staying at home. First thing I want to do is to share a word about our reentry process. Uh, at this point, uh, earlier today, uh, I, I participated with uh, perhaps uh, close to a thousand CMEs across the country, pastors and lay people uh, who participated in a webinar uh, that was um, broadcast on Facebook Live as well as on Zoom and uh, were bishops and um, leaders within this conference and within the Connectional Church talked about how we have to approach re-entry. While I have done um, uh, as many things as I possibly could to make this a safe sanctuary and a safe place for you, uh, there are still there is still work that has to be done. Uh, there are legal issues that we have to take into account and there are health uh, issues that still have to be taken into account of. One of those includes uh, the disinfecting of the building, which I have someone contracted to, to come in and do that um, pretty soon. But I want to make sure for your peace of mind that all of those things are uh, taking place. And I need you also to know that, um, that I am studying diligently and closely uh, the guidelines that have been set forth by the Centers for Disease Control, myself, and uh, along with my trustee, our trustee president, uh, Brother uh, uh, Larry Taylor, we have been working very hard to make sure that the building uh, is in place. I want to thank people like Ms. Doris Robinson, who has been helping us with um, getting uh, supplies and different things that we know that we're going to need to make this sanctuary safe. So I want to make sure that you know that we are still working and getting things in order so that you might re-enter. I have to share a word with you uh, uh, that regards health as well. If you notice the headlines, the news is saying to us that that uh, although at one point the coronavirus um, cases had begun to decline, uh, there has still been a slight spike uh, in, um, in cases in the state of Louisiana. Uh, although Louisiana is, although Shreveport region, the Shreveport area is not as bad as the Monroe area, the Lake Charles area and others, there is still a slight spike. And so because of that, I have to be cautious and take every precautionary measure that there is. God in heaven knows I love public worship and I want to be in worship with you. 
but I need, but I want to make sure that you are safe when you do come. So just understand uh, that decisions about reentry are not made in a vacuum. They are made with things in mind that sometimes people had not considered. But most of all, it's your safety and your health that I am most concerned about. As bad as I would love to have you all worshiping uh, in this building uh, uh, at this point. Uh, let's look at tomorrow, our Facebook Live in the morning, our uh, YouTube Live channel. Thank you all so much. I need you to invite some people tomorrow on YouTube Live. I need to see at least 50 people on YouTube Live. Go ahead and invite some more people. I need there about 20 there. Let's, let, let's raise these numbers if you don't mind. Uh, you all know the giving methods. And on next Sunday, which is the third Sunday, I'm going to have something called Public Offering Sunday. I want everybody to mail in, to send in at least $25 as your public offering. I, I should ask for more, but I'm going to ask that you would send in a $25 public offering on next Sunday so that I can make sure uh, we are doing very well. My, those of you who are givers are doing a great job. But we're going to have Public Offering Sunday on next week. I'm going to text you. I'm going to keep you uh, mindful of this uh, for next Sunday, the, which will be Father's Day. Uh, let's make sure that we do that. I'll, you'll hear more about that from me as well. About our June birthdays, I talked about them. Tim Emery, Damon Gladney, Faye Hall, and Maya Hudson. If there are others, make sure you text me and connect uh, with me so that I might be able to share uh, those with you as well. Uh, the Sunday school lesson this week comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 2. And it talks about the value of wisdom. I want you to read right here. Look at what it says. Wisdom is of highest value. And this scripture says, wisdom is worth more than silver, and it brings more profit than gold. Let's look at the text. And I want to start right here. Last week, I stopped here, but we're going to start here this week. What are you asking God for in this season? I know that you're asking God for health. I know that you're asking God to not allow you to get uh, the uh, coronavirus. I know that you're asking God to keep you financially secure and safe during this time. But how many of us are asking God for wisdom in this season? I, I, that's one of the things that this lesson has shared and has helped me understand. In fact, the scripture says, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask God for it. He gives it generously to all without reproach, and it's given to him. Uh, 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 he doesn't speak very much about other things in such an emphatic way. God does not. The scripture does not. But if we ask God for wisdom, God has a way of getting it to us and teaching it to us. Job said, wisdom is with the age and understanding in the length of days. With God are wisdom and might. He has counsel and understanding. In other words, wisdom and might, which correlates to power. There is power in wisdom. And this lesson teaches us that there is also value in wisdom. Here's what the scripture says. My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so you shall incline, you will lean your ear unto wisdom. You will make sure that when wisdom conversation is taking place, you are listening to it. How many of us listen to wise conversations as opposed to conversations that are foolish and that have no bearing on how we are going to uh, 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 propel our lives into a better, a better place? Apply thine heart to understanding. Yes, if you criest after knowledge, meaning if you seek after it and lift up your voice for understanding, meaning you're asking wise people, you are seeking it, you are consorting yourself with people who are wise for their understanding. And if you seek it as silver and searches for it as hidden treasures, Many people, are, many people are searching uh, for how can I become more financially secure? How can I have something that is of temporal value? If I can get the new house, if I can get the latest car, if I can get the best job. But listen to what the scripture says. Solomon says simply this. He says, if you seek after wisdom in the same fashion that you are seeking after the hidden treasures, 
that we all have seen movies or television shows or, or read books where uh, there's someone who is seeking for this hidden treasure and this hidden treasure is going to make all of the dreams of that person come true. Well, we ought to be seeking wisdom in the same way and find this very knowledge of God, for God gives us wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He puts up good wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly, meaning he is a protector, and we'll talk about it in a minute. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of saints, his children. Then shall you understand righteousness and justice and equity equality, every good path. When wisdom enters or comes into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, keep thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Uh, uh, discretion and understanding. Many times we have been taught about the word discretion and how to be discreet in the things that we are doing. Well, that's a part of wisdom, uh, if you would, to understand and to know that if I seek after wisdom, God is going to give me discretion and God is going to give me understanding. Let's look at this here. So then there are three things I want to share with you today, very briefly. God's gift of wisdom. Wisdom is a gift that comes from God. I hear people say that uh, law comes from God. And I hear people say that this comes from God and uh, justice comes from God. Justice does. But I want us to keep in mind that it's a gift of God as well. So then since it's a gift, we must seek it, go after it. The scripture tells us that. Then once we've sought it, let's receive that wisdom. How many of us have chosen not to receive a wise word? Sometimes we've been told things about ourselves, and what did we do? We rejected that wise advice. And how many of us can raise their hands? I'm raising mine. You see mine. How many of you have received some wise counsel? You didn't take it, and now you look back at it and say, Lord, if I would have just listened to somebody who knew more than me, and was wiser than me. Yes, I didn't receive it. You didn't receive some things, but God bless your hearts now. Most of us are at a place to where when we get wise counsel now, we know the difference. And then once we have received it, we will treasure it. Meaning it, it, it holds a place in our heart that I've gotten this wisdom. I've received this wisdom. I got to keep it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to bond with it. And then I'm going to apply it. I want to apply the wisdom to my day-to-day -day lives. And one of the things that we can apply wisdom to is in how we talk, how we behave, how we act. And then after I've applied it, I want to share it. God has a gift of wisdom. And then not only does God, there are benefits of wisdom. Wisdom protects us from sources of wickedness. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sources of wickedness. And I, when I read that, I was trying to see, yes, in life, there are many times where there are places where wickedness comes from, but because we're wise enough to stay away from those. And then wisdom, secondly, gives us a good self-image, meaning that once I have not made foolish errors, I think better of myself. Do you realize that many people who have image problems, they come from poor decisions, decisions that they've made, and it causes and creates in them. Everybody's going to make a bad decision. We all know that. But at the end of the day, it is making wise choices that is what's keeping us and gives us a good self-image because God is wisdom. And so we're made in the image of God. And so then that means that we have to practice wisdom as well. Thirdly, it saves us from difficult many difficult in life. And then fourth, it saves us and equips us to handle difficult situations. Wisdom will save you from difficulties in your life. How many of you are willing to look back and realize that many of the things that I went through that were difficult, I can't blame anybody but me. But wisdom then gives us the tools, the equipment necessary 
to handle difficult situations. So I can say what? This too is going to pass. God's going to carry me through this. I'm going to find ways to trust God in deliverance and in protection. Those are the benefits of having wisdom. And then there is the protective power of wisdom. The more wisdom one learns, the more one desi desires and enjoys wisdom. Wisdom keeps us from making decisions that will later bring only regret. Oh my God, how many of us have made decisions that you know were, were not based in, 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 in being wise as Solomon has tried to share with us? That's why Solomon asked for wisdom. Solomon asked for wisdom because he understood that poor choices and regret go together. I don't have to ask how many people. I don't have to ask anybody. I just know myself how many bad decisions I've made that I did not make from wisdom and I made from emotion and I have lived to regret them. And we have to learn to be real with one another and know that making decisions are often only going to bring about a sense of regret. Keep us from foolish choices and harmful consequences. We do know that every choice eventually has a consequence. That's what God is trying to tell us. And even in this lesson, Solomon knew that. Solomon was telling his son all of the things that I'm sharing with you today and all of the things that the scripture is saying. He is warning his son. He is enabling his son. He's empowering his son. He is teaching his son to say, if you follow this, you won't have to learn things the hard way. Yes, sometimes we, uh, life will give us and we'll have to learn things the hard way. Yes, that's part of growth. That's part of being an adult. But when we go into circumstances and situations with a sense of wisdom, we understand what Solomon is teaching us and what will make our life a whole lot better. Well, tomorrow, this is where I'm going to preach about tomorrow. I haven't preached this sermon in a long time. I don't think I have. I, uh, I'm working on the manuscript. I need you to pray for it. But in 2 Kings chapter 7, there were four lepers who were sitting outside the city gates. And God performs a miracle with these four leprous men. They raise the question in a time of quarantine, in a time of lockdown, why sit we here and die? If we go in, something good is going to happen. If we stay here, we can die. We just don't know. But we do know that where we are is not where we want to end up. I'm going to preach tomorrow. And I'm going to talk about uh, don't die in the waiting room. Hey, man, I, I just, I haven't preached this sermon, as I said, in a long time. But every time I think about this message, uh, it excites me. And I trust that you will be blessed by it as well. I want to say thank you. I want to say God bless you to each of you. But I most of all want to thank you for your faithfulness. I never thought that I would be pastoring the St. Luke CME Church and not have you all here with me on Sunday morning. But I want to thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you for... Uh, everything that you have done, and I want to pray for you and pray for your families and pray that we will maintain what we're doing now until we are able to safely return and be in each other's presence. I love you, and God bless you, and thank you, and maintain the level of positivity and the faith in God that you have. God bless you, and thank every one of you. God bless you there.